Hi, I'm Jane Play, I'm creating free video content, teaching people how to trade Betfair absolutely for free. If you're enjoying my videos or you're learning from them, please support me back by hitting the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit the like button on any videos you watch. This will enable me to create more free content for you so you can learn to become a better trader. Best of luck in the markets. Looking forward and they're off. Market in play. A St. Patrick's Day cheer gets the four Irish trained horses away in the grade one. So, Champion Festival 2022, day three. Um, right, so um, made a few schoolboy errors yesterday looking back on what I did. Had a big loss of 90 quid, uh, overall loss of the day of 20. I've looked at that and I think due to my tiredness, if you've seen that video, I've really made a few cock ups that day. So I don't want to repeat them. Looking at the first race here, uh, two mile, four fell on grade one, novice chase. Uh, we've got two short priced uh, favourites, if you like, and two outsiders. This really isn't much uh, of an opportunity for me. So whether we get involved in this, I do not know. It means using big stakes uh, and getting them in and out of the, at the right time. But you, you've got to consider if something happens to one of those two horses, the other one is going to go to um, an extremely low price. Something like it's going to go right the way into that, like 1.1 1 .1 or something, because uh, unless it falls, the other one falls or something, it's going to win the race. So, it's got to be extremely careful. Don't want any trades in as they're going over jump if we do enter it. But it might just be a spectator sport, so enjoy the race. Measured that one slightly better. He was quicker in the air that time. Leads now by three lengths to Bob Ollinger in second. Seven lengths then back to the other duo. Bustleton racing on the inside of El Barron. Bob Ollinger. Wasn't he something to do with Billy the last Kid? Last two fences than he was at the first. Could be wrong there. On now to what will be the second last in a circuit's time. Galapin Deschamps comes towards fence number five. He led there by three lengths to Bob Ollinger. A change for third now as El Barra moves on past Bustleton. Right, we're going to make that to ten pound a click of the for this race because they're lower fence prices. And Galapin Deschamps just got in a little. Consider I can still pick five pounds and fifty. And so they get a real cheer from the St. Patrick's Day crowd. So these prices are going to swing around a bit. We're not even halfway yet. And another ten fences ahead of them in the Turner's Novice Chase. I'm going to go in. I want to go in just after they've gone over a jump. That makes sense. Rachel Blackmore and Bob Ollinger racing in second. El Barra and Patrick Mullins in third. And Bustleton. If they're obviously an opportunity at that time as well, consider. Just slightly downhill at this point, on now towards the first fence down the back straight, fence number seven. Galapin Deschamps comes to it, measured that well, so to Bob Ollinger over in second, El Barra a little low, Bustleton the back marker. We want to be getting in front of a big stake like that, water jump it, taken as fence number I don't eight, fancy at the moment, it's just not moving up and well, down enough for me. Who's we're getting in front of a big stake, as if you change your mind, you get out against it before the market moves like that. Now in third, El Barra, and in fourth, Bustleton. It's a big chunk so of money there, look. The first of two open ditches. Galapin Deschamps stood a mile off that. But he really right. had to be scoping. And that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Why you don't want to be involved when they were about to jump. But he was clever enough over another plain one. That wasn't Galapin too bad, but it could have been worse. Two lengths now to Bob Ollinger in second. And now there's a break of 12 lengths back to El Barra. And Bustleton, a mistake at the back of the field. A dog leg turn carries them now to the top of the hill. Fence number 11, the final open ditch. And a good jump there by the leading duo. Galapin Deschamps now leads by only two lengths to Bob Ollinger in second place. The other two are safely over, but they're now 15 lengths behind. El Barra in third and three lengths then back. I'm out of here, man. Marker as the leading duo. Oh, and now crikey. over the fence right on the summit. And now they turn to go towards the fence, which brings them slightly down the hill. This will be the fourth from home in the 12th running of the Turner's Novices Chase. Galapin Deschamps comes to it, winged it, jumped it much so better. Just scratched that. Who breasted that fence in and that's it. That um, I'm, I think, the well, there is still quite a lot of time there. Over safely. So but Busselton, I don't know. At the moment, this is a private match race. And the race is on between Galapin I'm out of here, man. and Bob Ollinger. Although I'd like to trade it, it's just it too Galapin dangerous. It's just not worth it. So I'm going to sit out. Ridden for the first time by Rachel Blackmore, as now they begin to make the run down the hill and on towards the final quarter of a mile. Sucker. <laughs> Galapin Deschamps and Paul Townend, who have kicked off the turn. The lead opens up to nearly three lengths over Bob Ollinger in second place. The second last looms and Galapin Deschamps has made every yard to this point. He's clear.
clear by nearly three lengths over two out he just comes down to the fences now over in second there's 30 lengths back to the other two Busselton is now in third but down towards the final fence Galapin Deschamps is away and clear and he's over safely whoa he on one I one loser Galapin Deschamps is down at the last and Bob Ollinger has been left clear with the race on a plate Bob Ollinger now coming up the hill in the hands of Rachel 160 to 1, 250 to 1, someone got on that. And Bob Ollinger is three out of three over fences and wins the turners. Bob Ollinger Market is suspended. For Blackmore and for Henry de Bromhead. Busselton will stay on up the hill in second and in third will be El Barra. So that's a prime example of why you don't want to be getting in on the horse that's in second place towards the end of the race. Something like that happens. If I'd been trade, been tempted to trade that, thinking, ah, oh, it's lost, blah, blah, blah. Trading it up at uh, a large number. Um, you know, that, that dropped right the way in, as quick as you like, down to uh, 101 itself uh, after um, the first one fell. So, yeah, it's very dodgy. Um, if you look at... Um, the trade I put through, which I just scratched off in the end, could have got a small profit, but or I could have taken a small loss. Managed to get it scratched. Um, is that much better today than yesterday? Because I followed the race time up, where yesterday I was tired and I wasn't watching it properly. So I made sure I got out at the right time, and I just got the timing right. And you can see after that, that's when we got into that business end of the race, where you know the horses sort of uh, make their uh, attempt to win it, and, and you don't want to be in, involved in that time because if you're on the if you're on the horse that does win it or does run really well up to that line, you could leave yourself in a lot of trouble, which is what I did yesterday. Uh, made that mistake, but um, you know I'm only human at the end of the day. Anyway, we'll move on. Hopefully, we can get a few more um, trades through today. There's also Hexham on, which I'll be trading in the background. A few races there if there's anything suitable. Call it like a nasty fool, but horses up okay. But there you go. Let's move on. By Dallas de Picton, who was in the last third of the field. He hit that flight quite hard. At the moment, towards the rear of the field, Dun Boyne is just about the back marker as Kansas City Chief takes them over flight number two, and they're all safely over there. They'll cross 12 flights in all, and it's Kansas City Chief who leads Pile on and Dame de Compagnie on the outside as they go over flight number three. Honest Vic took that one in fourth position. He's followed by Falcano upon the outside. Oakley, Oakley. With the white cheek pieces on the inside, what's not to know is next. Right, okay, so this is uh, race two of day three of the Cheltenham uh, 2022 festival. Um, this race has got quite a big field. Uh, it's a three mile grade three handicap hurdle. It's a big field, so there's some high prices in this. Nothing that suits me at the moment, so I'm going to be looking for something to spike down a little bit uh, and see if we can get a few ticks through. Uh, in the meantime, since the last race at Cheltenham, I've just pulled a seven pound profit in over at Hexham. Um, if you're wondering why that has gone up slightly, because uh, I've made nothing on the first race. Okay, let's see what happens in this one. Position and then Damned Company on the outside, the Cobb. Born Patriot was the other one who has gone at the back of the field. So Born Patriot went at the top of the hill. He brought down Sassy yet Classy. So now they make the run down the hill and it is Kansas City Chief who leads. Pylon in second. The Cobb racing in third. On the outside, Dam de Compagnie in racing in Commentators a bit quieter than in the last in race. Volcano, followed by Seren, who races on the so these are two buttoned up for me at the moment. There's nothing that turns me on to getting involved in. It looks like a a pre-race market at this stage, really. I'm not into scumping out for a tick. It's just not worth it in play. Long time to uh, 
thing about what to do. What we don't want to do is be in the red zone at the end. Uh, looking at the race time is what I mean by that. It's a problem with these big fields. You know, it's not a race for the punters, really, is it? I mean, like, who can pick a winner out of that? It's a race for the bookies with this many, uh, this many horses. So hard to pick a winner, so you tend to find the turnovers less. On the inside, Mill Green and Cursor N, followed by Ala Philippe. And if the cap fits, then Tully Beggar races towards the inside of Winter Fog. Around the outside is Sire de Burley and the Jam Man. Then Third Wind and Bally Andy Dallas. They picked on as they go now over the first. A little bit of movement on the favourite starting to happen. Kansas City Chief Called say the favourite is the big price. Got that big movement. And last but one is Dun Boyne. So they head now on towards the final mile, and Kansas City Chief still has the lead on the inside of Dam de Compagnie, who took it in second. The cob was over in third. Ballard Very long way to go. Stake in the last third of the field, as they continue now on towards the third flight on this line. It's flight number nine. Kansas City Chief led Dam de Compagnie over in second, and then the cob on the inside took it in third. Pile on for the Hardly any money on this run, and right on compared to Kersaren, what you expect to see at this Green. festival. Potting a wide course is what's not to know. He races on the outside and just in front of Falcano, followed by If the Cap Fits and Ala Philippe in the black and yellow. On the inside is Tully Beg and then Third Wind. After Third Wind, the Jam Man and Side of Burley on the outside with Winter Fog as they bypass this next flight of hurdles. And Kansas City Chief still has the lead as they race now right over the top of the hill. I'm out of here, man. Chief still leads the way to Dam de Company now, just bumped along in second. I was just thinking about jumping in front of that 500. I'm glad I didn't. Third place. In fourth and around the outside is What's Not to Know, followed by Mill Green, who is creeping closer on the outside of Honest Vic Volcano. Then Curse The dog wants to go out for a pay. She can wait. Philippe tries to make ground. He's angling out a little bit wider. He's followed into the race by Side of Burley. So I'm sitting here because there's a big chunk of money there. Now beginning to check off rivals one by one. Lucy waits. Who's dropped right out the back of the field? Dallas, they picked I'll change my mind on that. So too is Bally Andy as they race on now down towards the second last. I can change my mind back in. What's not to know on the outside? I'm out of here, man. He's picked now the first three. Over in four came Kansas City Chief, followed then by Falcado and Ala Philippe, racing now alongside Mill Green, then Kerseren on the inside. Winter fog is improving, then third wind on the inside. Around the outer is side of Burley and then Tully Bank. They're in line for home and on his Vic and Rick. Sucker. Just seeing if I can catch a quick 10 6, but. And there you go. And that's all I can do in this race, just one throw. Now we're in that red zone. Um, it's time to Honest Vic has got the rail to help in the center. Is Mill Green? These are the first two. Winter Fog continues to surge. Alan Philippe and then third wind as they took the final flight. A mistake by Honest Vic. It's now on the near side. Mill Green over on the far side. Alan Philippe and third wind. Third wind now ahead in front. Alan Philippe is trying to come back. These two as they race up towards the line. Third wind just in front. Third wind as well. Market suspended. In third came Mill Green, and in fourth Winter Fog, and then in fifth place, if the cap fits. What a week for jockey Tom O'Brien, just days after his wife gave birth to their second child. He wins at the Cheltenham Festival on third wind for Huey Morrison. Huey so, yes, yeah, £7.17, just literally one trade through, pinch 10 tips, uh, as I saw an opportunity. Um, could have probably got another one through, but... You know, it, it's hard to, to, to exactly work out when the markets are going to be able to spot who the winner is. And uh, when you get to that point, um, as a rule of thumb, I cut off 20% of the race. So obviously, these will run a little bit quicker um, because they're, uh, you know, decent horses. But 20% of three miles is still a long way. Um, you know what I mean? It's still quite a long way. It's still about four furlongs or so, isn't it? Um, yeah, getting on for half a mile, not quite half a mile, but about three and a half, third or something like that. So um, it's still a long way out, um, but you don't want to be involved in the last couple of furlongs, that's for sure. So uh, as a rule of thumb, I sort of try and cut that out. Um, usually, I cocked up yesterday by not cutting that out, and I don't want to make that mistake again. So I'm happy with £7. If we hadn't got a trade vote, I wouldn't have been disappointed either if I had not got a match on both sides. That trade looked pretty safe uh, to me as well. Um, 
got it about right. So, uh, yeah, anyway, we'll move on and see what else that they have to do. Is in the third position. Out wide is Mellon, who's racing in fourth, conflated in fifth. And then Janadil. Oakley, Oakley. As they go over fence number three. And now a long run on the flat before they encounter the first of the four fences taken in the home straight. Paul Tan okay, so we've got the uh, tent for it. Um, it's a two mile four furlong um, grade one chase. Um, Alaho should absolutely pay this race. And I hope it does for the sake of the punters. Um, I'm also. I'm liking the look of Alorado Allen, uh, it's run in the past and now I don't think it's good enough to beat Alaho, um, but I'm thinking it might give it a run for its money. So what I'm doing is I'm laying it at 2.7, um, which is a reasonable price for it to come into later in the later stages, with a 50 tick offset. And the reason why, if it did happen to win the race, and it's a close finish between the two horses, um, then... Um, there's a good chance of me getting matched both sides of the book regardlessly if it was to win. So we'll have a little look at that. You can see they're at one and two at the moment. Um, if Alaho was to fall in this race or get pulled up, I'm going to cancel that bet off because um, I don't want to risk it. I'll also see if I can scalp a few tips through if the opportunity arises, but I wouldn't have thought there's much else on offer in this race. And Janadil conflated and Fanny and Destravel. This will be the final fence in the circuit's time. Alaho comes to it again, measured it well, jumping slightly away. See, these left. prices are just not suitable for me. El Dorado Allen as now the Ryanair field make the way up past the enclosures, and it's Alaho and Paul Townend who lead the way. And they've got an easy lead here, it's three lengths to El Dorado Allen in second, who in turn is going to break a four lengths over Shan Blue, who races in third place. A further length and a half back to Mellon. Two and a half lengths to Janadil, further length and a in half hindsight, length this would have been an easy one um, to do a back to lay on, but I just don't like doing back to lays at such odds on prices. But it was obvious it was going to run out in front and the price was going to come in, but just in case, I just don't like that kind of that kind of risk really. But um, it would have been an easy one. You could have pretty much dogged already. In third position, then Mellon, followed by Janadil. Fanny and Destraval is now relegated, conflated to just be last as they go now towards fence 10. This is open ditch. El Dorado Allen at the uh, second position took it about two lengths off Alaho, and now they make the run on. If you look at the money in the market, now towards fence number 11. I mean, there's a lot of money traded on these horses, Hello, granted. There. Didn't check his momentum. Safely over in second, um, Chamblou. Chamblou. In fourth now, um, you know, that's more than you see on some weekday races in winter, and even on uh, El Dorado Allen, that's more than what you see on some Irish races. But uh, obviously, the bulk of the money is all on the favourite. Up to the very, very oh, man, man. And fence number Huge amount of cash. With a fifth from home in the 18th running of the Ryanair, Alaho led there by two and a half lengths. I'm just so going to reset my ladders. So Alarado Al Allen's now Al gone into second favourite. Likewise, Mellon in fifth, and then conflated on his outside. That's because the other prices have dropped out. They take the turn going towards the fence. Well, it come right the way in to where I want it to. It's it questionable. As now they begin to set sail down the hill in the Ryanair chase, and Paul Townend is still out. I'm out of here, man. And going well. The lead is three lengths for Alaho over El Dorado Allen in second. Shan Blue switched out wide. Then Janadil conflated. Now being smuggled into the race by Davy Russell, closing from a long way back. Melon is last but one, and Fanny and Sucker. We need it to be a bit closer to Alaho, but don't look like I'm going to get matched today, and it looks like Alaho has won it as easy as everyone thought it was going to. Still a little way to go, but. Conflated is staying on on the inside. El Dorado Allen Shan Blue is next. Down to Gonna cancel that last. off. And Alaho still has this handy advantage. It's nearly four lengths as he takes the second from home. Janadil over in second. Down conflated when challenging for second place. And down now towards the final fence. Alaho is clear at the final fence now. He's over safely. Look at that. He paddled his way through it, but he's clear of Janadil staying on in second. What a fantastic Rodan course, though, hey? He's back in third. He has made every yard of the running. He will be only the second horse to win the Ryanair twice. And it is Alaho who again wins the Ryanair. 
Market suspended. Absolutely peed it as we thought. What a good one for the for the punters. Um, I don't think that price. There are a lot of good horses. It was actually too bad to be fair. Um, you, you see that run, you know. Uh, I've seen odds on horses a lot lower than that run. I don't know where near as good as that and win a race so convincingly. So yeah, that's one for the punters. I'm pleased about that. Not for me, but for all the punters at the racetrack and everywhere else betting on it today. Um, nice to beat the bookies. So um, yeah, I'll move on. Uh, I'll have a little look at. Um, I'm looking at Hexham as well, so hopefully I can pull some cash across over there. But there's not really been much offer for me out the first three races. Um, I've only put uh, a one trade through, so there you go. Who's backing away? Tom? Yeah, P uh, Paisley Park is tucked away fine. Classical Dream backing away. He's got off to a slow start. Market suspended. Okay, Market Dream. in Top play. Okay, so all ten of them in their stride for the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle of 2022. And it's Flooring Porter who takes the early lead, home by the lead, on the inside of Royal Cahala. Right, race four of Cheltenham. Not been really much for me to trade so far today. Not much really happened, so we'll have a little look. I've got Lane Low strategy on Champ at the moment, so we'll see if that pays off. Um, and uh, I'll also see if I can get some tips through the scout through the market as well. Royal Cahala over in third, and then Listener Garoska, followed next by Song for Someone. The races alongside Oakley, Oakley. as they go over flight number three. Time Hill on the inside. Last but one, Kashari together with Paisley Park and just last is Classical Dream. They take the first dog leg turn at the top of the hill. Flooring Porter, Danny Mullins have the advantage as they go now towards flight number four. That advantage now out to around about four lengths. Home by the Lee on the inside of Royal Kahala. Out wider, Lisnagar Oscar. So they cross over this flight. Leader, Flooring oh. Porter, jump that one. Have a little look at the pricing. Relegated to last on the outside was Song for Someone as they crossed over that flight of hurdles at the top of the hill at the back of the pack together with Kashari. So now they begin to freewheel down the hill for the first time. Quite a long run now before they cross over flight number five. Flooring Porter, his lead still holding at around about three lengths, but the pack now are being to close up. Between horses is Royal Kahala on the inside, home by the Lee, and on the wide outside, Lisnagar Roska. Champ is next, racing alongside Time Hill with wide song for someone, and then Classical Dream, and then at the back of the field, Kashari, and on the inside, Paisley Park, as they've now just about reached this next flight, which is the fifth. Flooring Porter comes to it, and again, he measured it really well, all safely over Kashari, just the back marker. So another long run before they cross over flight number six, the last in a circuit's time. Flooring Porter brings them into the home straight. His lead holding at four lengths over the mare. Royal Kahala, I really like uh, laying the front runner, really. In case they hang on to the lead, the price never goes out. You never get much. So. It's not until they like, sort of fade, really, unless you think they've really hit their base level in the market. With a long way to go. Kashari is no more than about six lengths off the lead held by Flooring Porter as they reach now flight number six. Flooring Porter, again, as he's done throughout, jumped that one immaculately as now they make the run up past the enclosures in the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle. And it's Flooring Porter who leads the parade. Flooring Porter. So, yeah, it's a problem with these uh, high liquidity markets for me. They're not really my cup of tea. I mean, I'm trading it because it is Cheltenham. But, you know, there's just not enough movement in the markets for me to be scalping out. I like a minimum of four ticks. So, sometimes you can get bigger stakes through when you do get them through. But I got put out yesterday. I made a few errors, but I did actually get... Um, uh, my exit, uh, the price taken twice, but it wasn't enough to clear anywhere near, like clear the actual, uh, the full amount of money. Take the second flight taken down the back straight. Once again, the leader was quick and nimble in the air. That leader is Flooring Porter. Midway down the back straight, on now towards flight number nine. Flooring Porter's lead is three lengths. Over in second position came Royal Kahala. Listen to Gar Oscar and push long for the first time, home by the lead. 
Champ is next, traveling well. He's followed into the race by Time Hill and by Classical Dream. Paisley Park off the bit. He's hit a flat spot. Ridden along on the inside now by Aidan Coleman. He's only got a We're down here on Champ. Song for someone and also Kashari. They go then towards the third from home. Flooring Porter, his lead two and a half left. I'm out of here, man. Carla, home by the Lee, Liz Garoska and Champ in a close fifth. And closing, he's going noticeably well at the moment for John Joe Neal Jr. Is Champ on the heels of the leaders. And he's about to take second place now as they now begin to make the run down the hill. Flooring Porter's come right back to them. On the outside, Royal Kahala, Champ back in third, Liz Nagaroska, then Time Hill. And on the inside is home by the Lee, who races alongside Classical Dream and out wide. Is All right, might be able to just get a few ticks through here. He's been furiously driven along by Eden Coleman to try and keep tabs, but he now is just about last with also Kashari at the back of the field. But it is a stacking, packing field. I'm out of here, man. Stayers hurdle and flooring Porter still has the lead. He stacked them up at the top of the hill and he's still there, but they're snapping away at his heels. Over the second from home, flooring Porter still going as well as anything as he makes a run now down into the home straight and entering the final. That's made done unless we get matched on Champ. <laughs> Sucker. There's a lot of money there sitting at freeze. Then Classical Dream on the outside of Time Hill, who is trying to stay on. Kashari is next, but it's Danny Mullins and Flooring Porter who still have the lead. Now they're inside the final quarter of a mile. One more flight to take. Flooring Porter has the lead. Classical Dream on the near side. Champ on the far side. Time Hill trying to stay on. Paisley Park is picking up late. Flooring Porter at the final Champ is well out of it. Flooring Porter out in front by two. Sorry. The classical dream in second, Time Hill is in third, Champ is in fourth, Paisley Park is in third, but Exploring Porter is out in front. So not much Champ opportunity for me in that one, 168, spectator sport for me today. Market suspended. Again. It was tight for second, a rallying Paisley Park on the outside of Time Hill, followed by Champ and the rest. Chahani and Munro as they jump the first fence. And at the back, Chinwag was very slow indeed and is slightly detached as they move on towards the second. Cool Cody, often a front runner on the inside of Wishing and Hoping, followed then by Shahali and Munro, Stolen Silver on the inside in the maroon jacket. And Commentator's gone. Oh, Mel. wrong button. Sorry, guys. White Blaze, the glancing queen towards the outside in the blinkers, Slate House, a red cap. Then Imperial Alcazar just driven into that fence and was awkward under Paddy. Oakley, Oakley. Hard line. And by so the fifth race at Cheltenham, um, I've got a couple of lane low strategies on Cool Cody, um, who's uh, sort of a, usually a front running horse, uh, and Chinwag as well. Uh, lane and both low, 75 quid. Uh, for, we're going to change that to 100 tick offset. Um, from in second slate house. Hopefully, I'll be with you up there till the finish and uh, pick it up for our 75 and before and getting caught. That's what I'm looking at, hopefully, race, happening. Uh, and Chimwag as well. Back Quite fancy that a little bit, but I can't see where it is at the moment. Anyway, we'll also see if we can scalp a few ticks through the race as well. So let's have a look at the top three and see if there's any opportunity. So far, there hasn't really been much for my scalping strategy uh, today. Just hasn't really been the opportunities. Um, and that's because the markets are just too buttoned up. So, um, sometimes it's you best to just sit on your hands and do nothing. They're all in a line, then you know, if you get a day of making no money trading because the market's just unsuitable, then so be it. The market's are different from one day to the next. Um, in certain ways, and one from one week to the next, and uh, obviously throughout the year they change dramatically as well. So uh, it's just a case of going for what you can go for at the time. Being patient. And it's Cool Cody from Slate House. Two and a half lengths to Imperial Alcazar on the outside of Shahali and Munro. Stolen Silver is back on the inside then. Chimwag's up at 65. Cool Cody's sort of hitting around that. Just above that 20 mark at the moment. Long way to go if you look at the time. We're not even halfway through the race yet. Spirit of the Games and Celeb Dalen. At the downhill fence, Cool Cody flew over there. And they're all safely over once again. All still standing. 
And on now towards the water jump. <laughs> Call Cody <laughs> on the near side of Slate House. Imperial Alcazar. Right the line now. Out wide. Jump that third. Followed by Shahali and Munro. That was four faults for him at the water. Uh, uh, silver. Then the glance just went in on that at the wrong time tonight. Grand parody at this open dish. Call Cody. Slate House one and two. Shinwag. Just trying to mistakes. get rid of it. There's hardly any money there, so it should just jump up. You'd thought, but long way to go. Call Cody attacking the fences from Slate House in second with Imperial Alcazar for company. Three wide round this left hand turn. Stolen silver. Shahali I'm just going to try and get it out at a lower. The glancing queen on the outside, and then Adramel. So there's just hardly any money there for Cheltenham. You'd expect to get matched. Thank you. Oh look, and if I'd hung on, I'd have got the profit. Well, I'm to call Cody then. The price has jumped out because of that. So just a scratch trade there. That's the problem. These markets just aren't bouncing as much as I'd like. Chimwags not really doing anything. The beauty about running these um, trades, though, if the horses do have a not a great run, then you no, you don't get matched, and it don't matter. I'm out of here, man. And Slate House, they have gone great guns here. Imperial Alcazar is third. Stolen Silver fourth on the inside of the Glancing Queen. Then Shahali and Munro, followed by Adramel. Spirit of the game, Celeb Dalen trying to make a <laughs> sucker. Challenge Slate House and Cool Cody relegated to third. Then Stolen Silver so, and the Glancing Queen. Unlucky Cool, cool Cody hasn't made it in as far as I'd like. Chimwang's out of the game. So so I'm just going to cancel them off. Cool Cody, I'll leave in for the minute because it is coming back in. We're matched. Don't go on and win it. No! Can you believe it? Four, five lengths clear of Imperial Alcazar. Spirit of the, of the game's yeah. running on as ever. But it's Cool Cody who's strongly <laughs> clear for another win at Cheltenham. Cool Cody and Adam Wynn. Market five suspended. Seconds. Spirit of the game's challenging Imperial Alcazar. Then stolen silver. Celeb Dalen never near. I was probably a bit greedy going for the uh, huge amount of ticks. Um... I never thought Cool Cody would actually win the race, but it's the way it goes. I get it wrong with these strategies sometimes. You can't get them right all the time, and it's the way the strategy works. Um, I've, you know, out of £125.98, it looks like a big loss, but I'm not too bothered because I pull in 75s and 50s and 60s all the time, and I get the occasional one like this. So, you know, it is part of the game, unfortunately. I'll stop back up to 150 quid for the rest of the race, uh, for, for the rest of the meeting. Over the week, I've, on my laying low strategies, I'm still in quite a lot, large amount of profit. Um, well, over the last seven days, um, and I've had a few like that. So I'm not, I'm not fussed about it. It's just part of the game. Never mind. Traction each way. Support yeah. the second string, Willie Mullins, but it's all about this horse, Dino Blue. Yeah, don't forget, jockey changes. Uh, Paul. Right, we're approaching. I think the penultimate race of the bay. Are we? I've lost count. Um, where are we? Let's have a quick look. Uh, recent markets. Recent markets, recent markets. So what, Cheltenham, we've done one, two, three, four, five. So this is the sixth race of the day, which I'm assuming that'll be the penultimate in which case. Um, just want to talk about the last trade quickly. Um, £125 down. I'm not phased by that in the slightest, if anyone's wondering. It's not, it's no big deal. It's a big deal losing the 94 quid yesterday because I, that was bad trading. With the strategy that I just run, I do have losses like that. Um, 20 the, seconds the wins far more more than make up for it um my mate bob was just been running over at um 10 seconds just show you over at hexham uh, i've got an email alert for that so I've just, just traded that in the meantime uh, on a running low strategy that's a front running horse. zero it often, seconds it often trades in low and doesn't win or so it's a good one to do a back to lay on i follow it all the time have plenty of money off my mate bob um, or it's a good back to lay if you prefer doing back to lay trades. Um, I topped my money up after the last race to 150 and I've now just basically doubled it up um, from 
eighty-six pound, I think it was, off my mate Bob, and uh, had another sixty uh, on something else that I've been looking at as well. So that's why I'm not too fussed about that one, two, five. I've made it back already, and and sometimes it's like I only see one of them sort of uh, something suitable for that kind of trading. You know, once every few days. Sometimes there's three, four in a day. It does vary, but I know with that, for every sort of hundred pound that I lose. I'm going to make about 300, so I'm going to end up profiting about 200 quid. And that is a weekly occurrence for me. So I'm not bothered about it in the slightest. But even though it's less money, the 94 that I lost yesterday, if you've seen that video, that was through bad trading. So that's what annoys me when I trade badly and make a loss. Market suspended. <laughs> not when I Market make a loss because, in play. because it's the cost of the strategy. So... Um, I haven't had a chance to tra transfer that money out. I'll get that 150 quid out of it. I don't want 300 pound in play. So I'll get that out after this race. Um, just see what happens in this one. I haven't looked at uh, any anything to lay low in this race. I uh, haven't had a chance to see if there's anything suitable. So I'm literally just going to see if I can get some scalping through. Um, I don't know. It's oakley, oakley. Field, so it's hard to say at this point. And uh, there hasn't been a lot for me today at Children. The festival's not going great for me. But like I keep saying, fest. Cheltenham Festival isn't the ideal meeting for me. It's more of a spectator sport. I like to get involved because I enjoy the festival. Uh, and if it ends up costing me a few quid, so be it. Um, other years, I've made money. Last year, I just watched it. I didn't even trade it. But let's have a little look at this race. Rangi and Braganza as they jump the second flight. And up there on the outside, Dino Blue with Mighty Blue right in the firing line in Purvis and the Black Jacket Mayhem Meyer. Then Party Central, Love on Voir is caught out wide, followed by Orpiste and Hayer, and then behind those is the Player Queen. Then uh, Nurse Susan on the outside of Nina the Terrier, tweed skirt round the inside, a horse with no name. They're followed by Statuaire, Grangy, Manishta Amawi, uh, Braganza, and Hidden Land are the last pair. On down the back straight towards flight number three, and Mayhem Meyer now getting a piece of the action towards the outside of Dino Blue and Mighty Blue. And then so these are just a bit too buttered up for my liking. It is tempting to just drop in there at 6.4. It hasn't traded below that. It's a long way to go. So, But it seems to me at the moment, every time I put a trade in low, there isn't that many bounces, if you know what I mean, which I'm used to getting. You've got to bear in mind, I'm not used to trading Cheltenham. You know, it only happens once a year, and I haven't traded it every year, so I've only probably traded it about five or six times. Where it was other races, I've traded hundreds, thousands of times, so it's hard to know what to expect as you only get something like this once a year. Obviously, there are a bigger meetings that I look at throughout the year as well, but. And on the outside, Mayhem Meyer, followed by Impervious in fourth. I prefer something in the middle. Nice bit of liquidity, but not so much, if you know what I mean. Susan. And then behind these is but I'm just going to hold that there for a minute, because that money's belief me. It's not far off over a crossover point. If it dips down, it should get matched both sides of the book. Doesn't look like we're going to. Price is going out. About seventh or eighth party central. And looking behind these, a horse with no name. Not for a while, anyway. Nina the Terrier, and then on the inside, Tweed Skirt, Braganza, Statuaire, Hidden Land, still towards... I'm out of here, man. Running on now down the hill, and Mighty Blue on the inside of Dino Blue, the warm favourite right in the firing line here under Mark Walsh and the JP... So there's hardly any money there, look how long it's taken to get matched, you don't expect that, Chapman. Just don't, you expect to get matched quickly. Then impervious on the inside, the black with the white hat. With all the money turning over, but it's just, it's just not happening. Looking race, Dino Blues now got the inside, followed by... I'm out of here, man. Looking at the race timer. Coming with a strong run as they turn for home. Love on Bois on the outside of Hawpees. And on the far side is Dino Blue. And they're chased by Party Central. From Impervious, a horse with no name and from the back brigade. And the rest still not matched up properly. Leading the way over to this stand side, approaching the final flight on the far side, Impervious, followed by a horse with no name and also running on Brigade. Come on, just get it out. How slow it's taken to get that four quid matched. Unbelievable. The price is right there pick up in front, jump in the and we do eventually from a horse with no name then nurse susan so i think still running on in the white jacket love on bois kicking a length and a half two legs clear and this smashing mare of harry fry's johnny burke for the noel feely syndicate love on bois market suspended second, a horse with no name grangy in third 
Yeah, I think, to be honest with you, I was expecting a little bit more. When I looked at that losing trade from yesterday, I keep banging on about it, but um, when I looked at that, I actually got uh, my price uh, hit twice. I actually got money matched on two separate occasions off, that, off the uh, exit amount of cash, but it just just didn't get matched, whereas, and you see that, that took ages to get matched, and there was only a few quid in between, so, you know, um, the the liquidity is just a bit strange in this, you expect so much more, um, and it's sort of maybe catching me out a little bit, so I think <laughs> I'm not a big fan of trading Cheltenham, obviously I'm not doing well on the festival, but I'm not going to include, in my profits, I'm not going to include that 125 as a loss, from now or on my overall results for the festival because I'm using a different strategy um, when I look at it and I include that in a different set of figures if that makes sense but overall with my scalping uh, obviously I had that £90 loss um, would put me £20 down yesterday um, and then yeah £20 in total over the day I was that wasn't so £20 over Cheltenham was it I can't remember now um, but I think I was just slightly in profit or something for the festival of a few quids, but it's, just, it's not really a lot, really. I prefer other meetings. But, yeah, anyway, that's another 770 in the bank, and uh, we'll see what else is on offer. I'm going to get that money out now, so you'll see that drop that back down to 150 by the time I come back. No, near enough. The schoolboy hours in the white cap in the final nine. Also, his mind's made up. Elegant escape belted the first, and now going on into the lead is Didero Valis, and Didero Valis is the leader from Elegant Escape. Omar Moretti is handy. And down there, Minds made up. So too Elend Elegant Escape. Two out at that fence. Minds made up and Elegant Escape as they race towards the back straight. And both jockeys still down on the ground. And the field headed towards the back. Oakley, Oakley. Zero Valis. And then in second, Fakir de Len. With them is Elegant Escape, the loose horse. Omar Moretti is there towards the inside, smoking gun. Mint condition is out wide as they jump the next plane fence. And they are safely over. And now on towards the water jump. And Dedera Valis on the inside of Fakir Delen. Smoking gun is still handy. Mr. Fog patches the grey on the inside. Mint condition is out wider. Very wide is Almazar Guard. And then behind them is Frontal Assault and Mr. Coffee, followed on the far side by Glen Lowe as they jump an open ditch. They're safely over that. At the back, come on, Teddy remains the bat marker. And now on to another plain fence. Tadero Valis, Fakir Delen, Mint Condition, Smoking Gun, and Jamie Codd on the outside, very handy. And then right place, right time right there as well in the light blue colours, followed by Mr. Fog Patches and then Mr. Coffee. Omar Moretti's on the inside as they jump this one. Then Cat Tiger and David Maxwell clearing that open ditch from Frontal Assault and Glenn Lowe and Schoolboy Hours. And then out wide is Almazar Guard, followed by Ain't That a Shame. Sean Bard and Power Stown Park and Larry towards the back and two or three lengths to come on Teddy. Over the next and they're all safely over that one. So heading towards the top of the hill and turning left-handed now. And about to approach the next plane fence. Didero Valis from Fakir de Len. Right place, right time, mint condition. Those are the leading four with smoking gun on the outside. They clear that one. And now heading down the hill towards the next plane fence. Just behind the leaders, Mr. Fog Patches, the grey on the inside, handy. Cat Tigers just behind him. Mr. Coffee in the maroon jacket towards uh, or three or four off the inside. Then uh, frontal assault for Jiggenstown. Out wide Almazar guard just behind smoking gun. None wider than Schombard and the bright yellow cap. Omar Moretti is back on the inside then. Followed by schoolboy hours just behind Glenn Lowe in the green with the white star on the cap. Back in the field to Larry. And ain't that a shame and uh, towards the rear Powerstone Park and come on Teddy getting closer now albeit still just the back marker but they're well grouped together as they head towards the two fences in the home straight with still over a circuit ahead of them and Didero Valis is the leader under James King from Fakir Delen in the air together there 
Uh, they land safely, mint condition, smoking gun, Schombard is on the outside. That's the leading five, followed by right place, right time, Mr. Cotter, Tiger, clearing the next. Then frontal assault on the outside, wider out is Almazar Garb. Mr. Fogpatches seems to have lost a few places from Glen Lowe, then ain't that a shame. Schoolboy hours, Omar Moretti, Powerstown Park, Larry, and come on, Teddy. You're just going to be waved towards the inside at this point, as we do unfortunately have an injured horse on the course. And it's Dodero Vales out in front from Fakir Dalen. Sean Bard right there with mint condition and smoking gun as they run downhill towards the next plane fence. The leaders sail over and they're all safely over, although Omar Moretti may have made a mistake or at least jumped it very slowly going on towards the water jump. Didero Valis has just about made all the running so far from mint condition. Sean Bard's on the outside. Then Fakir de Len, smoking gun, continues out wide, followed by Mr. Coffee towards the inside. Right place, right time is still in touch. Then uh, towards the outside by, by frontal assault. I'm out of here, man. Garb, Powerstone Park, Omar Moretti made another mistake towards the rear. And uh, making ground has come on Teddy now in a white cap having been last in the early stages, jumping the next plane fence. And it's Didero Valis who still leads the way to Sean Bard in second. Venetia Williams, runners, very prominent for Keir Delen. Mr. Coffey improving on the inside mint condition as they now jump another open ditch. Didero Valis from Sean Bard. And then uh, in uh, third place then is Fakir Delen, followed on the inside by in the maroon colors, Mr. Coffee, mint condition coming back, then smoking gum, right place, right time, jumping the next, that's five out over it. Uh, Mr. Fogpatch is away from that one as they once again reach the top of the hill and they've got four fences left to jump. It's Dodero Vales on the inside of stable companion Schombard. Out wide is Min Condition. Fakir Delen over next, Mr. Coffee. A mistake from Smoking Gun. A terrible mistake from Schoolboy Hours there. Schoolboy Hours was just chasing the lead. <laughs> <of> London <laughs> uh, Glen Lowe in the green white star for JP McMahon is doing better. Ain't that a shame is ridden along. Cat Tiger, Powerstown Park as they run on towards the third last, Sean Bard and uh, Didero Valis, followed by Mr. Coffee, who's moving well in third. Then Fakir Delem, mint, uh, mint uh, condition still there on the outside. Smoking gun, Mr. Fogpatches trying, trying to recover. Then right place, right time, Powerstown Park as they run towards the final left-hand turn. Come on, Teddy has dropped right away again and homeward bound now. And it's Venetia Williams, one and two. Sean Bard on the outside of Didero Valis, but Mr. Coffee is now pulled out for a challenge going over the second last Schombard a little stumble on landing but leads the way to Lucy Turner here comes Mr. Coffee and Sam Whaley Cohen on the far side weakening now Didero Valis Fakir Delen staying on the final fence Schombard over brushes through the top Mr. Coffee didn't jump it cleanly either Fakir Delen and rallying is Didero Valis up the hill Schombard leads the way drifting across to the right followed in second by Mr. Coffee Didero Valis is rallying gamely but it's Schombard is stable companion who's going to do enough and Schombard wins wins the football market win. suspended Mr. Coffey and Didero Valis Fakir Dalem back in fourth and they were well clear of Mr. Fog Patches and Mint Condition and now it's winner number eight at Cheltenham Festivals for Venetia Williams wow we her team are in sparkling form Lon Presse brilliant yesterday this is her stock in trade though Handicaps that look impossible, and she wins them with a 40 to 1 shot. She okay, so looking at the results from today, um, I'll pull the final and that's into the uh, summary spreadsheet. And uh, I did make a profit of £90, six pence. But um, you see, this video is for Cheltenham, and uh, if we actually look at Cheltenham, not all that great. Um, wasn't really much for me to trade. I only actually got involved in a few races. Um, this one here, just a scratch trade in it. Uh, 717, uh, 166, and 770. Uh, I did make that, uh, that big loss of £128 in the lane low strategy. Um, as I said at the time, I'm not too fussed about that because that wasn't bad trading. That was just, a, it's just basically part of that strategy. You get a few big losses. Um, with that strategy today is where my profits have actually come from elsewhere. So if we look at Hexham, for example, I have 84 quid over there uh, on one trade. Um, and if we look at 
the other ones as well, uh, a 73 and a 63 uh, um, Savile. So when I look at that 128, it's uh, you know it's not anything to do with Cheltenham really. It's just um, just part of that strategy, if you know what I mean. Um, I get I expect to get about sort of 66 percent or better out of that. So I, I, I expect to lose, if you like, almost a third of the time. Um, which is okay, that's still profitable. It's not really less than that, it's only more like about a quarter, but um, it's, it's a very profitable strategy for doing that. Um, 66% is my break even as long as I'm laying below, um, or, or it puts me in profit as long as I'm blowing, laying below uh, 3.0. Um, if I'm laying below 2.0, which I do sometimes, um, if I think something's going to run really well and not win, then it only has to be um, 50%. Uh, even less than that if you go uh, sort of lower down uh, into the odds on. Um, the only trade so far I am annoyed with myself about is, well, a couple from the day before, which we've already mentioned, that 97, that was due to bad trading and mistakes going in late in the market, not following the race timer, caused me that problem. So um, just looking at Cheltenham all in all. So if we close that off, and we just, if I just pull up the flats. So I'm just trying to show what we've done so far at Cheltenham. So um, today, all in all, if we look at Cheltenham as itself, it's a £111.48 uh, loss. Uh, yesterday was, uh, because of that bad trade, was a loss of 19.99, And on um, first day on Tuesday, it was a profit of 62.74. Uh, Without 126 uh, Quid, even if we don't include that because we include it in the other strategy, it's still not a lot. And to be honest with you, last day of Cheltenham tomorrow, it's not really for me, my type of trading, but I, I do it anyway just because I like the festival. Um, I'll be looking forward to actually making some money come Saturday, which will be a better day for me. I need to as well because I've just, if you don't know, I've just moved house recently, so I've actually had quite a bit of time off where I've not been trading yet again. Um, so I just keep needing time off. So I need to really just get stuck in and make some money at the moment. But yeah, just watch the results at a later date. I will, um, I will do another video uh, of the lane low strategy, and I will give out some tips on actually how to select the horses because that's the most important part of the, the strategy. Once it's set up, it's pretty much automated. Um, you know, you don't need to worry about anything. You don't ever close your position off because the amount of times that you uh, lane low. You, you'll get horses trading for less than 1.2. So if you were to try and save some of your stake, you'd end up cutting off a lot of your losses, uh, wins out as well. So that make bigger losses. So you have to just let, run with it, essentially. So it's all, all made. Um, I'll show that at a later time. Um, it's different to my normal cold trading strategies because the work comes pre-race. So when I'm scalping and so on, I do the work in the actual race. When I'm doing the lane low strategy, I do the work pre-race, and it's just more about research with them. But I'll, I'll give more details on that to anyone that's interested at a later date. So, yeah, there you go. Um, um, that is uh, what it is so far. Uh, hopefully Friday will be a better day. But um, I'll post this up anyway, just so that I am human. I do make losses myself. I don't make profits in every situation. But you can see that £102 on Friday is the biggest loss I've had in quite a long time. 27 there, but, you know, you're going back throughout the year. Do you know what I mean? There's not many. Shit, it's the biggest one. <laughs> biggest loss in about a year. But there you go. Anyway, <clears throat> let's move on. And uh, look forward to a better day tomorrow. If you are trading Shelton, best of luck in the markets. I hope you're doing better than me on the festival. Bye-bye for now. Introducing Geek's Toy Trading Software, the fastest, most customizable, and most popular software for betting and trading on Betfair and BetDAC. Designed by professional traders for you. Key features include unlimited desktop settings and the ability to create custom profiles to suit every user's needs. Unbeatable speed, real-time prices, and one-click betting. Unique management of multiple markets. You can bet or trade on multiple sporting events simultaneously. Support for eight languages. Context-driven help on every window.
Datching and Bookmaking, Training Mode, Advanced Charting, Enhanced Navigation, Support for Betfair Coupons, Stop Loss and more. Geek's Toy, possibly the best Betfair and Betdac trading software in the world.